We're gonna be seeing some pocket action here on the side of Dreamax, but the thing I'm worried about here is are they ready to deal with this Blue's assisted Inteleon. We saw how much work Rom did with the assistance of Wujiro. Like the pairing between these two is incredible. And now you've got some amazing frontliner. Same thing again as yesterday. The fact that they love running this Blastoise Trevenant combo. Mm -hmm. So much frontline to provide all this room for Rom to really do what he wants to do at the back. But I love the response here with this last pick, Delphox. We saw this Pokemon do quite a number on this very, very melee heavy composition from Zeta yesterday, but I guess the question here is can DreamX pull this off successfully because yesterday it didn't win. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it was a Pokemon that on paper, it really checks every box, right? A lot Definitely. of boxes. You, I mean, it was so many boxes to check, but the Fire Spin shutting down the Trevenant and sometimes the Blastoise, but honestly, just waiting Dragonite from getting within Hyper Beam range. Maybe you can stop one of those Dragon Dance combos, break those stacks. Any moment like that seems great, but this Stealth Fox's early game has been exposed so many times. The Fennekin in the Braxton stage is really difficult, but they have great early game threats in both the Leafeon and potentially the Urshifu if they can get away without being invaded. I don't really see many invasion threats on Zeta Division yeah. side. So DreamMax will have two very early game threats from Katazera and Gizan. Yeah, now here's the thing though, even though we aren't looking at any natural early game threats on the side of Zeta Division, we know this team is also not afraid to play aggressive yes. if they find the opportunity to do so. So I hope DreamMax is ready for this. If they're ready for this potential aggression and they have the necessary um, pe people in lane or any kind of support really to provide that uh, assistance then we could be looking at them being able to repel that early game and maybe even having a pretty reasonable mid game yeah but again it's going to have to come down to the execution can they make the right predictions for these lane rotations because zeta division they are so quick to pivot from lane to lane if they feel like they're going to attack a particular target yeah that is true that's a great point you bring up Danley, because I, i'm talking about all these early game threats i mean zeta division transforms pokemon that i would never consider into that category into that option i mean we've seen dragonair invades aggressive yeah and successful from this team. So they are Drizzle. very We've seen Drizzle coming in, rotating from That's bottom true. lane and just getting snipes off. And if I'm like, who? have fun in ranked, the <laughs> Inteleon invade right off the start of the game is such a fun one. Especially when in ranked mode, when you have those emblems equipped, the yellow emblems on Inteleon actually oh. have a really fun synergy. So just want to give that shout out. Folks, sorry about that quick pause. We're actually going to be jumping back into game momentarily between these two squads. And here, here we go, Zeta Division versus Dream Max Esports. All right, so what are the lanes going to look like? Definitely no invades, but we are seeing a bit of a share in that central area here for Dream Max, just trying to guarantee that nothing gets stolen, no one gets slowed down. So you can see Dream Max, they're trying to start off as strongly as possible. Yeah. This does come at the cost of them not you know, not pressuring the Dratini at all, but maybe they have plans for these lanes. Yeah, I am so curious on how that Crustle is going to work out. I mean, Delphox plus Crustle is a ton of crowd control in the early moments of the map, but there's not many targets on the side of Zeta Division that are really trying to dive or make any kind of movement. So it will be an interesting matchup. We have an early push by Tomato, though, on this Phantom. We'll get a slight score, looking to maybe get out of this fight, but they do secure the opposing team's Bunnelby and Focus ban, plus that Trevenant passive, so much survivability, Tomato gets away scot-free. I love how much action we saw over a Bunnelby of all things. Yeah, yeah, what? Swabble and Altaria, that could be a bit of a different situation, but unfortunately, the secure on the side of DreamX is just not there. There's yeah. just too much burst on the side of Zeta Division, so they just snap everything up, and look, the Urshifu was up. Maybe this is the go sign for DreamX to do something, because they've gone for Surging Strikes, and the one thing Surging Strikes Urshifu does so well is be an absolute menace on those goal zones. So you go for the dives, you pressure those Pokemon on the goal pads and potentially get knockouts while you do it as well. The top are though gonna be running into a skirmish, but look at that, Drizzle just coming in for assistance and that's a free knockout. Well, I mean, we couldn't have set it up any better before the match started, Stanley. We had a Drizzle and Dragonair it's movement. It's Rom, okay. Into the enemy I mean, it's we know Rom. what Rom is capable of. <laughs> 
And to tell you the truth, this is a Zeta division that we have been watching for largely the competitive season play compositions so similar to this. The Dragonite and Inteleon are really signature picks of this team, and that was part, a huge part of the run at AO's Cup where they got that second place finish. This is tough for DreamX. This is the phase of the game that they should be dominating on paper. This Urshifu, this Leafeon with the Kofi, this should be huge for them. Oh. Right now, Zeta Division is answering everywhere. Yeah, and now the fact that Tomato has evolved into that Trevenant as well, the Woodhammer basically is going to stop the Urshifu from being able to do what he wants. So, two knockouts, Crustle and Urshifu. I'm really worried for Dream Ice here. It's really going to have to come down to this pocketed Leafeon, but I fear even Katazera is just doesn't have enough damage by himself to be able to look for those knockouts his team so desperately needs. And it's kind of incredible, too, even with that Comfey pocket, they don't have the survivability either. We're watching Leafeon dive in, and maybe if they jumped in with that extra boosted auto, they'd be able to take the KO, but almost certainly they'd be giving up two in return with that Leafeon and Comfey combo. Now, it's going to be a Regieleki focus on by Zeta Division. No surprises there. They got the great secure, so they want to have that score tempo because obviously Rayquaza is going to help with that. Final one will be the Reg Ice. The Slimeshot goes a little bit wide, but pretty early on the secure anyways. Fire Spin holding Trevenant for a slight moment as we try to chase this, but great play by Tomato. Pulling first away, and it will be Dragon. I believe with the Unite move. Wow. From the of Rope will be landing onto that objective. This game is looking so clean for Zeta Division. They are finding everything that they're looking for, and DreamAx, they are scrambling to figure out what resources do we have left? What can we do? Because the main objective for this lineup, as you said, it's not doing what it was supposed to do during the laning stage. And unfortunately, if you compare the two teams and you want to look at scalability, it's heavily swinging in, Zeta, in Zeta's favor. So what do you really do here? Backcapping's not really an option for this composition either. No, so you have to win team fights. You're absolutely right. And I would say maybe you could find some 1v1s, but with the way that Kakata and uh, Tomato have been rotating around this map, you are never going to find a squishier target alone without a defender or a support to back them up. Watch your road, the whole squad showing up here. Tomato on the back line, but oh it's a my big God. push by the crossbow, but look at that. They're barely hurt, and they're able to walk away. Or should go in the back line. Unite move, going to try to hit a few targets, but they're just taking two much burst damage. Rom is simply not missing at the moment. Yeah, and the Bliss Assist on Rom almost deleted the Urshifu as well. So the fact that Zeta, they're not looking at being extremely efficient with their Unites. They just say, if we need the Unite for that damage burst, we're going to use it so yeah. you don't actually get those free KOs. Of course. Oh, this team is playing so safe. DreamAx, they've got to come up with something extremely creative or something so out of pocket that, su that basically surprises Zeta Division. But the way that this team groups up as well, they're never splitting up. They're never giving those opportunities for a free potential knockout. So for DreamAx, again, can they pull something out of this hat? A rabbit, a drag, obviously a knockout. That's what you want out of this hat, but Yeah, if we're looking for something specific, it. I'll find that knockout. Okay, I'll take that one, please. Kakata going to take a decent amount of damage. They still have that Hydro Typhoon. Leafeon in the back in the line, back? but Rom with that great response with their own Unite. And now there's just the damage is swinging in from Zeta Division. Big engage, the Rubble Rouser stuns a few targets, and we're getting real low on the Reggie Alecki. But yet again, Tomato. it's Zeta Division to find that secure. Tomato lining it up. This team, they are so disciplined with all of their movements, just finding those objectives, being able to jump onto those targets. The Dull Fox gets knocked out here as well. Knockout after knockout. And Zeta, they are just pushing themselves further and further ahead of DreamAx. And I fear they're going to reach a point where they hit critical mass, where they're just too powerful and too strong that DreamAx, no matter what they do, they're going to eventually run out of gas. It might have to come down to this defense here, but even with the with the extra defensive capabilities of that goal zone, they're just being pushed further and further away. Oh. Reggie Alecki goes in, they will be able to score, and all the bonuses are not there anymore. It's broken, Urshifu's gonna go down. Zeta Division absolutely dominating this matchup so far. You know things are going sideways when poor Comfey has to leave from one of their teammates and actually just try to slow down the Reggie Alecki at that moment. They were just throwing themselves in front of it, but obviously Zeta Division not giving Dream Max anything, not an inch in this battle. I mean, what a double feature of what Japan is capable of that we've been able to see these couple of matches with both the Zeta Division, of course, Fennel dominating the previous one on stream. This has been quite a showcase of what a lot of people consider to be the most powerful region in Unite right now.
Yeah, I think at this point, a lot of people are going to have to agree it is one of the most powerful regions. Now, unfortunately, actually, say the division losing Rom in the back lines, leaving yeah. on actually getting a successful knockout there. So a big boon for the team. Meanwhile, the rest of Zeta Division fighting up against DreamHacks in that bottom lane. And so far, things are not looking too bad. They're hanging on, but not looking too convincing here. Maybe the plan here is to use the rest of the team to create that diversion and draw attention away from that roaming leaving on. Maybe that's what DreamMax was doing, just causing that little bit of confusion and just saying, if we see Rom, we take Rom. Yeah, I mean, they'll take any opportunity they can get right now. And Leafeon, of course, is going to be the roaming option. But that does mean that basically every other team fight is going to be a 3v4, essentially, with the rest of them trying to face the bulk with Leafeon and Kongfei B. Uh -oh. That duo. How does Zera getting in a little bit of danger, but that side shot going wide is definitely a grace for them. They're going to try to make their way towards maybe the goal zone to score or to face that Reggie Alecki as now we have Dream Max and Zeta Division collapsing on this objective. Oh, and actually gets stolen by the Leafeon! The Emerald two-step, and it was even a knockout onto Rom as well. Zoinks, we could be looking at a potential comeback here for DreamX. Again, they're starting to pull out some really out-of-pocket strategies here. It's working out for the team, and now with Rayquaza on the field, Katazera, if this man can continue to do this, cause all this chaos and confusion, they might have a way to steal this game back. Yeah, Katazera with a good little dive there. We take away the Dragonite passive, so no more Marvel scale for Vidobos, and the next and dive this. will be We're scoring big. as well. Yeah, we'll get a decent back. Cap in. I mean, it'll make that scoreline closer, but Zeta Division locking down that Urshifu that's one of the best offensive targets that DreamMax had, and now it's gone. So, Rayquaza will start being tapped by Zeta Division for Zero, trying to run away from Kokata, who's got that chase. Hyper Beam gonna go wide. Great eject button for the Delphox as DreamMax, at this point in time, is just trying to buy time. Dragonite in the back line for Zero, using that Unite move. It's only gonna land on the Trevenant, really, not have much impact other than that. Rayquaza still being tucked but Zeta Division right now in defensive mode around this objective. And it looks like Zeta, they don't want to play anymore. They actually want to slowly start to rip away at this Rayquaza and DreamAx. They've caught wind of this. They want to try and get the steal. They're actually going to try and go for another knockout. Yeah. Errol two-step, they get it. The lockdown. Katazera so close yet so far. And they somehow get it. The Yoshifu. GZ and getting the Rayquaza buff. DreamAx after a game where Zeta Division looked like they were beating them down in every single fight. The chaos, the roaming leap, your Katazera, the, the confusion he created, the opportunity DreamAx needed, they found it. Unbelievable. But I mean, the hope hasn't gone out for Zeta Division yet. They're going to try to push forward. No back cap potential for DreamAx Esports. But no fireworks. Team, a team fight win needed for Zeta Division. Big Hyper Beam lined up. They got it. Simply not enough they damage. DreamMax Esports is going to hold on, and they're going to take a 1-0 lead in this series. I love the fact that this team managed to keep themselves together mentally because I think in a lot of cases, many teams would have been broken down thinking, what do we do? Yeah. But regardless of the situation, they kept their heads on. They said, Katazera, it's up to you. You need to draw them away. Don't yeah. let them snowball. Got a couple of opportunistic pickoffs and following it through there, I think Zeta, they were just like, guys, what the heck is going on? What do we do? <laughs> like, we can't play the game that we want anymore. Then coming down to that race, Quasar, mate, did this team maybe get a little too overconfident thinking? And honestly, Brazil as a whole is quite well known for playing quite a bit of. I think Legacy doesn't play too much of it, but a lot of other Brazil teams end up yeah. doing so. But we're going to be jumping into draft here in just a moment between these two squads as Zeta Division have chosen that first pick position yet again, and they're going to lead things off with that Hoopa ban, a 43% ban rate for this Pokemon in our tournament. Just a reminder for anyone out there, our stats, any percentage as you see on screen are now in day number two are only from worlds so all these statistics are only from group stage from yesterday and will be constantly updated with the matches today yes so we do have our bands here for both teams again just no elder gloss no hoop i know i'm real and that Mimikyu is going to be taken out of the pool as well. And Rom, are they really locking in this Inteleon again for Rom? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the swap. This is the swap I was hoping for. This, yes. Last I, time we saw Zeta it. Division take Blissey in that first pick, we are going to abandon that strategy and instead lock down the Leafeon. So we might not be banning it, but we're counterpicking it. I'm a big fan. But there's that immediate response. If you were going to take first pick Blissey last time, 
we're going to take it from DreamMax. And I actually think this is a very significant counter pick coming in from DreamMax as well, because we did see yesterday how important that Blissey is for enabling Zeta Division to do what they did uh -huh. in their previous matchups, which was essentially not only save your teammate, but power them up and turn the tables in those fights. Yeah. So I want to know what the response is for Zeta Division. Okay. They're going to change things up. They're actually going to go for an EV Lucian comp here, adding Espeon to the roster here for Rom this time. Okay, okay, maybe Inteleon just feeling a little too much pressure for the way that DreamMax was playing. We're going to rotate Rom onto the Espeon. Tomato on that Mammoth Swine is just an immediate answer to the Urshi food. Ice Fang, a but great option. But there's a Mr. Mime! Mime. Oh my oh, gosh. wow, okay. Yes, Chandelure! Mr. Mime is wild. I'm a fan. Uh, Chandelure, this is... The the Brazil pick. They have been playing this Pokemon for so long. One of the most popular picks in that region. So I'm very excited to see it yet again. And if they pick Aegislash right now, I am the happiest boy oh my on God. earth. What it's Christmas is even morning. happening? Out of zero on the sword. Oh my gosh, what kind of game are we gonna be looking at? So this is this is crazy. This I didn't think we would ever see a team just go absolutely you know, crazy with their uh -huh. draft. But I kind of think, I, you know, I'm thinking through Zeta's perspective. I want, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, what am I, what's happening? What yeah. am I playing against? Because you look at this, it doesn't have a clear direction. There's a lot of running at your opponents. There's going to be Chandelure as well to, to turn out those lights and be their back range damage dealer. But what is the overall goal here for DreamAx? Is it just to run down Zeta Division? Because if you look at Zeta so far, they have three ideal candidates that they want to jump on top of. Leafeon, Espeon, and Dodrio. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I think it's actually a flip-flop of that strategy. I think it's a defensive strategy. You think so? They've built anti-dive. Age of Slash for a long time, and I'm not saying it got played, but there were rumors <laughs> that it was one of the best Pokemon into the Eeveelutions. Wide Guard is an incredible move that counters a lot of the Eevee's moves. Uh, you Emerald Two-Step, ignore that damage. You have that great bit of bulk just to dodge one of those bursts. And there's going to be, of course, Leafeon and Dodrio attempting to do that. There's some really interesting stuff in this matchup. We're going to be talking a lot about builds and draft, but Danley, we called it out. We said draft was going to be the most exciting thing in this game. I don't know. The gameplay is going to be electric because we jump into game number two between Zeta Division and Dream Max. You know, I'm looking at this game and I'm kind of wondering, was this Mammoth Swine the right pick? Because in their eyes, were they thinking, oh, we're just going to have to deal with the Urshifu. We just need that single target lockdown. But Ice Fang Mammoth Swine, it excels when it's trying to focus down one target. But when you have three four Pokemon that you potentially need to actually lock down. Mm -hmm. What's the goal here for Tomato? Does he have to just basically stop everybody? Is he still going to focus just on the Urshifu? He is causing quite a bit of uh, problems here because he has stolen look at two buffs on this Pylo. So he's doing so well on this little swine up. And can they actually stop him? If he makes that getaway happen, it would be a miracle with the eject button. Tomato! Unreal. The, the heist tomato. of the century! Tomato going to escape for the enemy central area with both buffs and their full, I mean, not their full HP bar, but a whole lot of it. And they're going to be making it back towards their side. I mean, what a response from game number one into game number two. Urshifu left untouched in the enemy central area in that game number one. Certainly not the way in game number two. Love that adaptation from Zeta Division. We see some spicy stuff from Dream Max, but a Whoa, great shift from playing. Zeta. This is a nasty top lane. They look at all these Pokemon that are just going to want to jump right on top of you, especially with the Urshifu as well. This Dodrio is going for the little pokes. Maybe can go for a sneaky pick up here. The Comfey, though, not enough sustain, unfortunately. Dodrio is going to go down, and Comfey will run away. We do have Tomato coming back, but I don't know if Tomato can do this by himself if you get the freeze. They do have the Leafeon coming in, so it looks like they do get a secondary third knockout here with the Ice Fang, and they managed to stop the attack from Dream Axe. Okay, okay, solid. So they keep a lot of those points away. I mean, the main part of that initial push after they got the Urgent Boot was to get the Dublade Evolution. Hone Edge was still stuck at that level four. They wanted to get some scores, get some of that attack weight pressure, and get to the double. So they got there, and it will be Sacred Sword that Kata Sarah's gonna be playing. They get a big engage, and that's the immediate KO onto that Pylo Swine. Percentage of HP missing damage is huge in that specific option. I love this Age of Slash final pick. I honestly do. And we're actually looking at a Flamethrower Chandelure in this game. It's not okay. going to be overheat, so we're looking at some big damage numbers in this game. It is a really interesting choice. We'll see if it does pay off for them, as unfortunately, Blissey will be picked off thanks to Kakoda. 
Are we going to see another attack? We have the Espeon Rom on the sidelines. They just managed to get the pullback onto that Urshifu. Instant knockout. And that's one of the frontliners. They still have that Mr. to Mime, but man, this this Lampet, there's only so much you can really do here with a Mr. to Mime sitting in your front lines. The Flamethrowers, they're doing a little bit of work. Nice eject. They're not being caught out by the Pilot Swine, but he's been caught out by the Dodrio. We have the Urshifu coming in. Oh, barely surviving thanks to the regen on that goal zone. Oh my goodness, that Lampet's living the edge of that cliff. Yeah, I, man, shout out to Lampet of Kazera, but oh, nice dive by Giesen to take that knockout, but it's Vidopal on the top side picking up two as well. So we're trading knockouts basically everywhere. This Combei Leafy on duo, we saw it from DreamHacks, we saw it really help win the game, and now Zeta Division gets their hands on it. So, so interesting. But I was talking about that flamethrower earlier. I can't think of a harder composition to land flamethrower explosion hitboxes onto than a Dodrio Leafy on composition. Yeah. That is so hard to lock down, but I mean, they want that damage number, they believe in their ability to land those skill shots, and they're ready to go. I actually think it'll be interesting to see the second move option. I mean, traditionally, yeah. I think Imprison, the best competitive oh. move that they have, but oh. it is Poltergeist. Oh guys. The living room is really tough for Dodrio and Leafy on to deal with, so I think getting all that furniture in play is actually going to be huge. It's going to be so good for zoning those very small choke points as well. We do get a big push coming out from Dreamax, oh. but look at that, though, instant knockout onto that ocean food. Dreamax, though, they're not going to be letting up at all. Espion with the Psychic, Solaire throws them in the air. Another KO, and in the back lines, even the Chandelure as well. Dreamax not successful with that push, and Zeta Division will get their counter scores in and break the skull zone. Okay, Dreamax is cooking. That is a shit ninja doll Aegis Slash as well. I, uh, I have played too many games of that in ranked, and I have won some of them. Uh, so <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with it on the world stage, but right now, Dreamax, they up a game against Zeta Division, um, and they're feeling, they're feeling it right now, you can tell. But Zeta Division has been the ones responding oh in time. Gosh. Triple Trample stopped by that barrier, so nice little wall for a moment, but it will wow. not do much more than that. Ignite Midnight for the blind, like we saw. But it's it on cool cooldown now. Yeah. yeah. It's on cooldown, won't be here for the next set of Reggie objectives, but hey, at least Chandler didn't get knocked out. That's the most important thing, right? Gotta make sure your attacker is going to be big and strong when you need them the most, especially around that Ray Quasar pit. We do have a bit of a kerfuffle happening here in that top lane, and Aegis Slash with the with the Mammoth Swine here, the Pilot Swine still actually, Tomato has not evolved yet. You can't really go for those little cute plays, especially with Tomato around. You really have to make sure you have that vision to spot him out. Down bottom, though, they are trying to go for a fight as well. They don't quite get the lead gun, unfortunately, thanks to the Bliss assist. Okay. The damage is there. The Mime is there with the lockdown as well, but they can't comfortably take this goal zone. Yeah, now they get a little bit of points scored in, but it feels like if they try to gain an inch, then Zeta Division just shoves them down immediately. I have so to a little say, bit of scoring, but not enough. Their mobility is probably the one thing keeping them in this game at the moment because they're the division because they are they've not been very easy targets to catch oh, they yeah. always have some way to escape these skirmishes mm -hmm. and unless you have that hard lockdown for dreamax they can't really they, they struggle to finish off their targets no you're so right like look at this urshifu is trying to chase down a dodrio normally urshifu a t uh, pokemon that can see any individual target and find the ko flux zone or not but these speedsters are having a great way of getting out and mammoth swine's just general tankiness and ability to Locked down with Ice Fang. It's just too much for them to contend with. Big dive in with Lance the Earthquake. It suns multiple targets. Grabs caught as Zera. Lines up Vidopo. That will be a Shed Ninja Doll. Coup de Gras onto the Mammoth Swine. And there we go. That's the Age Slash combo. They're still hanging in this fight. They're still hanging in that fight. They weren't able to get the Chandelure. So just firing off those flamethrowers from the back lines. But I think they're slowly starting to run out of gas because they've lost Tomato in the back lines. And the Chandelure left uncontested. Urshifu trying to catch up to that Dodrio, but just can't quite find that opening. And instead, I think they will be retreating. So Dreamax can deal with the Regieleki. Unless Rom wants to do a cute little play. No, he's going to play it safe. Okay, don't, don't go too crazy, Rom. Uh, okay, it's not Italian, it's Espion. Amazing call up by Kanisera to do that rotation. That was a great play from Zeta Division. Leafion, Confe, and Dodrio all immediately went down to the bottom path after the flight was a little bit lost. Trying to get oh my gosh, the egg bomb set up! But no, oh. not going to take the Registeel. Dodrio going to clean that one up. The coordination for Dreamax, they are looking impressive today. The fact that they got that free knockout on Tomato, just perfectly stacking all of their stuns, just goes to show how informed 
DreamX are today. And the fact that they were able to take that game number one, it wasn't a fluke. They are legitimately a fantastic team today. Yeah, they're also looking really good on the scoreline, despite only having one goal zone uh, available, or having no goal zones broken, rather, in this situation. Clearly, they're primed for some pretty big overdunks at any given moment. The Leafeon and Dodrio roaming right now. Some early damage under the Blissey, but of course, that will be out healed. We're getting real close to the final stretch. Olivio caught out. That will be the showtime. It's Mamo Swine to go down first. Urshifu Boon, Aegis Slash able to combo those moves. The Dodrio caught by both Walls and the Egg, and now it's all hands on deck. Zeta Division with the response. Leafeon's able to take out the Mr. Mime, and Vidopo is bringing this game back around. Rom, Vidopo, and Wajiro hang on, and now they're focusing on the Rick. And they're going to be able to get it as well. They have so much damage potential. Zeta Division finding the chink in DreamAxe's armor and being able to bring it to a game number three in this matchup. Tomato may have been a bit of a hindrance, but I really feel like in that case, he was really a trap. DreamX really focused and grouped up to try and take down the Mammoth Swine, but once everything was done and dusted, when you're grouped up and you're up against a leaf on an Espeon, you are asking to be united. I know, exactly. All those Unite moves were so strong, and we just were out of cooldowns on DreamX simply. Did not have enough firepower to continue that fight, and Zeta Division are just simply not done. <laughs> they are in the enemy central area still. A lot of those Rayquaza shields may have faded, but they still want to keep on the pressure. Vidopo still having essentially a full ray shield can threaten back caps at any moment. A minute may be left on the clock, a ton of gold zones to work with, but Dreamax has one of the hardest tasks you can possibly have in Pokemon Unite in front of them right now. Yeah, they, they essentially have to score somewhere along the lines of 450, 500 points if they want to comfortably be able to take this game, but with 40 seconds to go, they're thinking about it. They have split up. They've got two in that bottom lane, three in that top lane, and only Tomato is defending that top lane. We do get a bit of a mini score here, thanks to the urge of 26 points, and we do have a hard push happening up top, but back at home, there's a Jodrio. Uh -huh. There's a Leafion scoring some bit free points in the enemy base, so I think at this point, DreamAx, they're thinking of game number three here, thinking, we did great in game number two, but what was the issue in this matchup? And it really came down to that quick skirmish that happened right before that Ray Quaza. Yeah, that was so important. I mean, a lot of cooldowns used to knock out that Mammoth Swine. Some decent responses. I like that Mr. Mime retaliation, but not enough. Leafeon, Comfey, and... Max at all. So no. maybe DreamX, this team is being overlooked. No one is looking at them. No one is really thinking they're a threat. And, you know, DreamX, they're making the most of this underdog situation that they have in the tournament so far. Fair enough. Well, DreamMax, I mean, all eyes are on you now. Time to make a showcase. We're going to stick to our bands. The Eldegoss will remain in that band spot. Mimikyu, Hoopa will be the same for Zeta Division. Now, DreamMax has been banning the Umbreon the consistently in this position, and it will be the repeat Umbreon ban for DreamMax. So Zeta Division, what is the play here? Are they going to go for this Inteleon pick up for Rom? Nope, they go back for the Leafeon. It's a safe play, it has worked for them, and it's also a deny pick for DreamAx. Yes. Yeah, th it's the best first pick right now in yes. this specific matchup. I don't think you ever leave that on the table. Now, this Urshifu Blissey has been looking extremely solid for DreamMax, so I think going back to that well is a great decision. This is a good start to the draft. I think we might see some shifts a little bit later on. Zeta Division is hovering that Mammoth Swine again and the Espeon, but I am curious. I think the Mamo we will see a repeat of. I am very curious if we see the Espeon a second game in a row. Okay, I, I want to hold our horses here because we have not seen any defenders and supporters on the side of Zeta Division. They have gone all out with their speedsters okay. and attackers so far. Interesting choices here for Zeta Division. I'm not oh. sure if it's going to be the last two support and defender for their last pick, or are they going absolutely ham? And are they just going to bypass a defender? Kamfei is being considered here, yeah. and it's potentially locked in for Wajiro. What is Tomato going to be going for that last pick? 
I want to know why is Tomato last picking here? He saved this tree to the very end. Yeah, I mean, clearly Dream Max is not going to be taking it away. Dream Max very focused on trying to counter pick everything that Zeta Division is doing, which is a tough spot to be. You're playing Zeta's game at this point right now. Zeta going with this double speedster composition. I mean, we're about to see the Japanese Potion Dodrio, infamous in that region. Infamous. And now it will be the Blaziken, the final pick. Wild that we are seeing Blaziken for the first time in this series as a last pick, but it will be Katazera picking that Pokemon. As much as I like those niche Aegis Slash moments that I think they were pretty great in a few spots, I mean, Blaziken has proven to be one of the best Pokemon in the entire game right now. Lock it down. We're running into it. We have Mammoth Swine for crowd control. I guarantee that's going to be a Volt Tackle Pikachu. We're going to have a little bit of a net, a little bit of stoppage from that Mammo. Let's see if we can slow down this double speed serve Zeta Division. Well, the thing is, I'm more worried about the speedsters slowing down Dreamax because for Dreamax, their lanes are a little weak for those first couple levels. Very, so this is the yeah. ideal time for Zeta to actually consider going hyper aggressive in the lanes and maybe even consider, do we want to actually go and pressure that mid lane from the get go? Yeah. Because they don't really have the best supporters to come in and assist. Like you've got Blissey, you've got the, the Mammoth Swine as well, but these guys kind of either want to be in their own lanes or on the enemy side of the map. They don't want to yeah. be defensively in their central area. Yeah, I'm really curious if we see an immediate start to the match of an invade, right? Obviously, tomato of all people. Yeah, tomato can, it. right? I mean, there is the Trevenant invade technology. Usually it involves a float stone. I don't think tomato had that one equipped. So we'll have to see where these early game rollouts go. We're gonna have Torchic in one, Pikachu in another. Not a whole lot to write home about, but here we go. Game number three between Zeta Division and Dream Max Esports. One team moves on, one team goes home. And on the side of Dreamax, look at how they are guaranteeing uh -huh. this farm for their OGP. They're saying, we will give you first class escort to ensure you get those levels. So I love the fact that they are playing so securely here. They're not taking any risks at all. And it's going to come down to the Urshifu to stabilize the lane for that Torchic up in the top because you don't want to have that Blaziken delayed at all. Pikachu doesn't need to worry about evolution, so I think they can kind of scrap that bottom lane if they really want to. It's that Blaziken that's going to have to get that assistance. But for now, they just want to take those extra little bit of experience there, get the evolution up for the Urshifu, and we do have a surging strikes Urshifu for this matchup. All right, so we're going to go with the Rapid Strike a couple games in a row. Geeson's made it look pretty good but they've been struggling to really close out some of these knockouts without a Unite move or without a Bliss assistance. They won't have either of those for a few minutes. So let's see what the early impact is like. Big Electro Ball taking a lot of that. Tomato's going to use the eject button, but Ooh. well done. They will make it back to their goal zone. That eject button just playing so nicely there for Tomato. So unfortunately, because that was a failed attempt on the side of Dreamax, they're going to go for the rotation instead. Combuscan is holding their own up there against that Dodrio Comfey combination. And the fact that Pikachu has shown himself, got to be so careful, Rom, actually thinking of maybe trying to go for a play himself there but these teams really trying to position themselves to go for those very quick knockouts and actually this might not look good for the Kabaskin. it's a free knockout for the Dodrio Blissey to follow as well this is a free score for Zeta okay a four player rotation into the top side it's a whole ton of investment almost five players as you see Tomato on the mini map kind of rolling up to join them as well but a great response from Dream Max Esports this is their chance to dunk a ton of points into the bottom side of the goal but with this rotation Zeta has now locked in a score lead and taken every bit of experience from the mid part of the map. Yeah, very interesting dis like priority decisions on the side of DreamX because they have not really provided a lot of assistance for that top lane. It's been a lot of focus down in the bottom lane. Yep. And I kind of question, is it because they're trying to slow down Rom? Do they want to break that bottom goal zone? Do they want to have that map control down there for that next Reggie? Why Why is there no priority here for this Combuscan? Because they need this Blaziken to come online at some point. Yeah, they really got to invest some resources in it. Dodrio almost getting that KO, but now it's... Oh. Oh, there turn. we go. There will be a revenge knockout. Liquidation going to take credit for that one, I believe. Katazera still not at that level seven, but certainly a lot of damage is going to be breathing a bit easier. 
We're headed towards that seven minute mark, a very close score line, but now the objectives are about to start spawning. It'll be Zeta Division prioritizing the top side of the map. Dreamax with a bit of a split strategy as they have to give Blaziken some farm, but they are gonna have eyes on both objectives. Yeah, we've got Urshifu coming in with the Blissey, trying to compete for that Reggie and Lucky, but Dodrio manages to get that secure, and unfortunately, so Dreamax will have to deal with this potential four man push coming in from Zeta Division. And there's only so much you can do without the Bliss Assist. You just don't have that boost in power to really threaten the four-man push. Yeah, I I'm not really sure why we jumped in there with Yoshifu. You want Reggie Alecki to hit your goal zone at that point, but it is going to be tough. Now you have to try to retreat and defend your second goal zone where these double speedsters are really going to try to take it. But Dream Max will be able to out-secure Tomato. Not an easy task that we have learned again and again and again, <laughs> but they are able to take out that basement Reggie, earn a Reg Ice buff, and of course that team-wide EXP. Yep, Katazera is online as well. Level 8 on that Blaziken, so really going to have to ramp it up when that, with that experience gain. But it's going to be hard with Vitopo roaming your central area. That Dodrio trying to take your experience as well. They do catch them with the Vault Tackle, and there goes the bird going back to base. So big boost of experience going in the way of Dreamax. These little knockouts really paying off for them every time they can get them. Ooh. Okay, we're looking at two teams that are really employing some big combos. Right? We have the full tackle into the blaze kick, and then we maybe even have the Mammal Swine to set up some moments, but there's also Tomato teeing up some big plays for Leafeon. You would hammer pull and center a few targets, allow for some big engage in this double speedster. We're gonna see a lot of knockouts in this match, and I mean, what a time to do it. The pressure is on more than it has ever been for either of these teams as a chance at the World Championship title is on the line. Oh, they're trying to go for some quick and actually, they even use the Unite onto that Urshifu. No knockout, but definitely a big amount of damage. And even Pikachu coming in with the Thunderstorm. They catch the Dodrio, but they can't quite get that Leafy on. Just too quick for that lone Pikachu. But again, these little pickoffs, every time Dreamax get them, this is going to push them closer and closer to not only equalizing the game, but they're actually slowly overtaking in levels. Yeah, exactly. I, such a good point, Denley, because, I mean, points, you're going to just kind of have to forfeit that strategy. Oh. Of this game. Frieza will make it away. That Slash Duck not going to reach the Pikachu. And they will escape. But yeah, you're going to go into the final stretch with a point deficit. That's going to happen basically no matter what. Into a Dodrio Leafeon composition. Your plan is to win the team fight and secure that Rayquaza. Oh. This is his son of the Blade Skin. Sets up for a huge overheat. That's the first knockout. But Olivio's taken so much damage. They got to retreat. He's going to be on the receiving end of an Espeon Unite as they set up a few targets. Mammal Swine with that Rampage. Knock around a few targets, but Tomato with an absolutely huge Horn Leech into a gigantic Unite move. The Trevenant from Zeta Division is unbelievable. Oh, Dreamax, they ran out of gas and went at the time they needed it the most. They just didn't land all of their big Unites. The Bliss Assist, unfortunately, didn't connect onto anybody. It was just the damage boost. And the fact that they didn't have the necessary lockdown to lock one person down and to get those KOs. With all the Unites down, it's really it's really hurting Dreamax, especially in this fight up against that Reggie Alecki. And the longer they stay here grouped up and they don't get the Alecki or they don't get the, the knockouts, down bottom, Leafeon's going to be able to take the Reggie for free. Tomato's going to come and assist in that top lane. I don't know if you want to be giving away a free Reggie here. Yeah, I mean... It's a Reggie steal. Yeah, it's going to be an attack buff, but I mean, that burst damage already is so unbelievably strong. What else are you going to have to deal with? Grom does take quite a bit of damage, but with just Blissey and Mammoth Swine there to combo, they are not going to find a way to close the deal on that knockout. The trio Comfey has been the duo for most of the time, but interesting to see Vidopo run around without that pocket from Wajiro. Instead, it has been on, I think, believe Kankata is the player that rocks the Dodrio for Zeta Division. Yeah, he doesn't need the pocket anymore. He's confident in how oh, he yeah. plays again. He's the potion. He's the potion Dodrio. He's got his own sustain. Down bottom, though, big Emerald two step on that bottom goal zone, and actually Two going down on the side of Dreamax. They will try to keep fighting with that Blaziken, but too many players have appeared here for Zeta Division with no knockouts. They're overwhelmed. And now it's Zeta advancing in that bottom lane towards that T2. Dreamax, this game 
They've kind of equalized it, but they're still not looking comfortable here. Tomato simply does not hit a Horn Leech without at least two members in it at any given time. This tank player has been shutting down Dream Max's offensive hopes at every single turn. If we have any time to siege one of these tier one goal zones, it's been shut down by a quick rotation and Tomato setting up a huge play. Horn Leech, Woodhammer, Unite Move if we need it. Everything has been used to lock down Dream Max and they have not found a way to fell this tree. And we got five seconds to go before that Wraith Wazer spawns as well. So we're hitting that last two minute stretch here, folks, at the Pokemon Unite World Championships. Final game between Zeta Division and Dreamax. Team that makes it through will continue on, but the loser will be eliminated from the tournament. And Tomato has managed to catch Olivio. He's on his own, isolated, forced to use the Mammoth Mash okay. defensively. So they won't have that anymore for this next potential fight. But who's trying to go for the cheeky play? Katazero in a very aggressive push. The Topo scouting for the team on that Leafeon as well. But who makes the first move? Zeta Division, they're the ones playing defensive because they have that point advantage. Yeah, Tomato with a great lockdown on the enemy Elbush as they're sitting there. I mean, DreamMax knows they're there, but they simply cannot respond because of the amount of damage they will receive if Tomato locks them down for even a moment. Finally, Zeta Division will relent and move back to their side. That allows DreamMax a little bit of space. Tomato going to focus on that Mammal Swine yet again as Katazera knows their role. Oh, the they blaze with their combo, they're down. Olivia was going to grab that leaf yard. Pikachu Unite move is teeing up quite a bit of damage. Mammoth Swine with no Unite move will not have a chance to last long in this fight, but they can still land an Ice Fang and they're going to run. Oh, Tomato! Tomato. Won't land anyone with that Phantom Forest. Pikachu will eventually go down and Zeta Division is hanging on. But Gizen and Antharos are still in this fight, but Antharos is gone. Two for two so far, it's actually three for two. This two trio are doing so much damage. GZN, he needs Olivia to provide that assistance. He needs some kind of disable, some kind of support. The Urshifu is down. Oh my gosh, I don't even think they have the damage. Katazera though, coming in with the overheat. It's down to that Blaziken. Bird versus Bird, who's going to win this matchup? Katazera playing with the bush, trying to catch him out. But this Dodrio, he's got the assistance. He's got the healing. The overheat's not enough. He has relented. He gave the knockout away. Eight, seven, six. Zeta Division locking this game in. They will proceed to the next round. And Dreamax. The journey ends here. Oh, with a few moments for Dream Max where maybe they could take down this team, but Zeta Division is simply too strong. I mean, Japan is a region and they are, I mean, they're unbelievable. <laughs> they are unbelievable. <laughs> Love the year. description. <laughs> yep, thank you. I have lost for words when it comes to 